Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're going to be doing a series of paid sponsorships from Plex over the next couple of months, one a month, focusing on different Plex features. And I figured today we would start with a new one that just got announced, the ability to control your Plex server with your Amazon voice devices. I'm not saying the A word to give you time to mute your uh, Amazon Echoes and whatnot in your home because I will be issuing the trigger word quite a bit uh, over the course of this video. Now, I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure, this is a paid sponsorship from Plex. However, they are not reviewing this content before it is posted and all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it and see how all of this works. We're going to start with something really simple. Alexa, tell Plex to watch The Expanse on the Studio TV. It looks like you are in the middle of Season 2, Episode 2 of The Expanse, Doors and Corners. Would you like to start it from where you left off? Yes. And soon we'll be seeing The Expanse Sorry, show up on I'm the TV here. Now, I am getting some errors. Right it's still a little now. beta right now, so it is sometimes not uh, realizing that it's actually starting the playback here. But you saw that I was able to uh, issue it a command and have that command playback on the NVIDIA Shield here that we're running uh, on my television. And it knew because I had watched this on another TV prior that I had already set a bookmark to where I last left off. So it asked me if I wanted to continue watching it there. So that was a, a pretty helpful thing to do. Uh, so I can also set it though to play back on other devices. So I can go back to uh, the device here and say, tell Plex to play Return of the Jedi on tablet. Enjoy watching Star Wars Episode 6, Return of the Jedi. So here you can see that I was able to direct Plex, hopefully, to begin playing uh, Return of the Jedi here on my tablet uh, just by telling it which one I wanted it to go to. Now, for most apps, this does require that Plex be loaded and uh, be the active application on the device. So, for example, here I have uh, Plex loaded up on my tablet. If I go back out to the main menu here, uh, it will not work because, again, it requires Plex to be loaded and in the forefront at all times. So that includes tablets phones, as well as the Apple TV. However, Android TV is a little more flexible, so watch this. Alexa, tell Plex to play Return of the Jedi on the Studio TV. Enjoy watching Star Wars, Episode 6, Return of the Jedi. So you saw that it was able to actually spring up the uh, Plex app from the NVIDIA Shield, even though that app wasn't loaded. It does need to be loaded up in the uh, background, so I think you may have to go in there initially just to load it and get everything set up when you first boot the Shield up, but as long as it's able to sit in memory in the background, uh, you should be able to summon it anytime you want. Now, what's really cool about the NVIDIA Shield TV is that it can turn your television on. So you can issue a voice command to the Alexa device. It will then turn on your television, turn on the Shield box. It will then pull up Plex by itself and then start playing your media automatically. Really cool that you can do that without touching a remote. Now, where I find this to be the most intriguing is on some of the recommendations that it might be able to make for you. So what you can do, for example, if you have your NVIDIA Shield turned on, is just walk into the room and say, Alexa, tell Plex to recommend me a television show. You were right in the middle of an episode of Leonard Nimoy, Star Trek Memories. Would you like me to resume it? No. How about starting a new series? Would you like me to put on the first episode of American Genius? Sure. And hopefully that'll start. Okay. Enjoy American Genius. And so now it's starting up here. So it's going through my library and finding things that I haven't played and making some suggestions as to some stuff that I might want to watch, especially if I'm coming home and I'm not really sure what I want to watch, but I know I want to watch something. So I think that's where the real strength in this lies. You can also ask it uh, things that you were in the middle of, so you can make sure that you didn't forget to finish watching something that you might want to watch. So uh, some really interesting things that you can do that I think are very well suited for voice, which is why this feature uh, is so intriguing to me. Now, you saw a minute ago I did uh, ask Plex to play something, and I didn't specify uh, what player it went on. So what you can do is you can give it a default player to be uh, using for its voice-directed commands, or you can ask it for a list of players like I can do here. Alexa, tell Plex to change the player. Select from this list by saying the number of the player you'd like to use. 1. Shield Android TV. 2. Shield Android TV. Three. Studio TV. And you can hear that there's a real reason and importance for naming your, uh, your players here. And not every client allows you to name the player. So on the Android side, uh, I am able to go in and adjust the name of the player. I'll put something in the extras channel if you're curious as to how to do that. Uh, but I found on iOS and on the web and some other platforms, you can't change the name of the player. In fact, it defaults to whatever the name of your device is. So my iPad is named like iPad Air 2 or something from my iPad. I owned three iPads ago, and it was a little bit too long and lengthy. So you have to actually change the device name 
in some cases in order to get that uh, to work properly. The other thing I noticed is that you really need to be very uh, careful about how you have your media named in the library because, uh, for example, I tried watching The Force Awakens, the new Star Wars movie. I didn't have Star Wars in front of it and I uh, requested Star Wars The Force Awakens and it didn't know what to find for me. So it might get tripped up on a couple of things like Back to the Future 1, 2, or 3. So you really have to make sure that whatever your titles are uh, is what you're going to be asking for. Otherwise, it doesn't know what to look for. Now, in order to get this to work, you do need to install the Plex skill into your Alexa app on your mobile device. So what you do here is just go over to the little hamburger menu, uh, tap on skills, and then what you need to do is go over to the search area here, uh, type in P-L-E-X and search for it. It'll then pop up that uh, skill set. You can click enable and then uh, you do have to connect it up with your Plex account. So you do need to have a Plex account with Plex in order for this to work. I don't believe you need a Plex pass though. If that's not the case, uh, let me know down below in the uh, comment section. But uh, you log in with your Plex account, it will then uh, connect up all of your Amazon Alexa devices with your Plex account. So any device in the house you can issue those commands to. It will then uh, direct those things to the appropriate players in your home and you are good to go. So really a nice little feature here. The one downside, of course, because it is a skill, uh, you do have to always say, tell Plex before you issue the rest of your commands. You do have to kind of train yourself or memorize the script here as to what you need to say in order to get things to work because sometimes you might uh, not include the Plex thing and then you might start playing music on your Alexa devices versus actually playing back on your shield or your tablet or your phone or something like that. So definitely uh, take a look at the uh, list of commands that I'll link down below in the video description so you can see all the different things that it can do. But I did find it to be pretty useful, especially if uh, you aren't sure what to watch and you're just kind of walking into your home and saying, you know, Alexa, suggest me a movie to watch or tell Plex to suggest me a movie to watch and then have your TV turn on and everything just start up automatically with no remote. I think that's pretty cool, especially if you have one of these Android TV boxes like uh, the NVIDIA Shield. A little less useful on tablets and phones and whatnot, but uh, very useful, especially if your device has the ability to turn on your television. So that's going to do it for uh, this little look at uh, the Plex Alexa app. I want to thank Plex for uh, doing this sponsored series because it is always fun to delve into features and uh, there's always something new to look at on here. So we'll be back next month with another uh, deep dive into a Plex feature, although I'm sure we'll probably uh, touch on something Plex related even before March rolls around. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.